Hi everyone, my name is Pastor Brian Wise and I want to welcome you into my home. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, this is a part of our midweek Latin worship service. Uh, where This year our theme has been Tree of Life. Early in the season of Lent, we celebrated the Tree of Life found in the Garden of Eden uh, to the prophecies when they talked about a tree. Last week, you might have heard Pastor John reflect on the parable of the mustard seed. And so today, we have the fruit of the Spirit, which can be found in Galatians 5. And here's what it says. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. This is our good news. So where does your mind go when you hear about the fruit of the Spirit? For me, I get sent all the way back to being a child. I remember singing a song called The Fruit of the Spirit. And maybe you grew up in a church setting where you sang this song too. So I'm going to sing it right now, but I want to invite you to sing along. So if you know the song, please join me so I feel a little less awkward in this moment looking at a camera singing to myself. It goes like this. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. For such there is no law. Bum, bum. Thanks for joining me. So why do we look at all of those things that I just listed off? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity or goodness, as the song said. Faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The first fruit or thing that is mentioned is love. Love is a commitment that we make to others, freely serving them without counting the cost or waiting to collect something in the end. There are many examples of love that can be found in our Bibles. We celebrate the love of Jesus and soon we'll celebrate that love through the story of Easter. But I love to share that love is a theme that is talked about more than any other theme in our Bible. We're told that we love because God first loved us. So we're told here that this is an attribute that we have. The next fruit is joy. I think joy can be really powerful because it can overpower gloom or negativity. It comes from really powerful memories. So the things that bring us joy can be people, places, hobbies, memories, a song, a movie. And so what we do is we hold on to those joyous moments. And specifically when life gets hard, it's a wonderful opportunity to bring out those joyous moments, to pull us out, to, to say we know that it can get better. We know that there are good times where we have been joyous and blessed. The next fruit is peace. Peace, we sometimes say shalom, is more than just the absence of conflict. Or war. But peace means being complete. It's not something just eternal that we yearn for someday in the future, but peace can be found right here, right now. The fruit of patience. If you were able to hear my sermon from this last weekend, I shared that I am pretty impatient, that I have a really hard time with waiting. Patience here means learning to remain constant. No matter what may be happening in that moment, have patience. The fruit of kindness. When I hear this, I think of daily demonstrations of love lived out and shown for the world. Kindness is often the way that people see and receive our love. I've always loved this phrase, that people don't care what you know until they know that you care. The fruit of generosity, or goodness, as the song said. I'm going to choose goodness here. Goodness is not about not sinning, but I think it's about doing what's right, even when we know that no one is looking. A friend of mine 
always likes to use this term um, asking about our moral compass. And his illustration is that Christ is our moral compass, helping us point in the right direction. Then we have the fruit of faithfulness, which is practicing of holding fast to what you have promised, even in the face of challenging times. Then we have the fruit of gentleness, which really reminds me about being truly human to other people. Specifically, when you know that someone else is going through a struggle or brokenness, the way we treat them is with gentleness. And then the fruit of self-control. I think it's unique. Self-control touches on all the other kinds of fruit. It's handling the heat and stress of all situations and still being who you are. Here's why I think all of this matters. Fruit is something that a tree naturally produces. I once remember reading something about Martin Luther and apple trees, but because he talked about apple trees so often, when I tried to Google this uh, story, I wasn't able to actually confirm that it was Martin Luther who said it, but let's just say it was him for tonight. The story, as I remember, it goes like this. Martin Luther was talking about apple trees, how they produce apples, and it's just something that an apple tree does. But, he said, an apple tree is not defined by how many apples it produces or doesn't produce. And the story he said was this. Imagine that there are three different apple trees in the backyard of my home here. The first tree produces a lot of apples where we have so many different baskets filled with apples. Apple tree number two produces apples, but not as many as, as tree number one, but it still produces several baskets of apples. Apple tree number three, let's just say it doesn't produce any apples at all. The question he says is in the end, are they all still three apple trees? The answer is yes. You can't change it. They're apple trees, whether or not they produce a lot of apples or no apples at all. You can't change it. What I remember most about this apple tree analogy is that he then drew it back to us, that we are all loved children of God, that we are all fully capable of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I'm not a perfect person. I'm not always patient or always full of joy, but I'm still a child of God. Nothing can change that. And the good news is that because I am a child of God, I am able to produce fruit of the Spirit. In John 15, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in them bears much fruit. You are an apple tree. Christ the vine, you the branches. Fruit is not something that you try and produce to become a child of God. The fruit is just something that you produce because you are a loved child of God. So what kind of fruit do we produce? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. For such there is no law. Would you pray with me? Holy God, the tree of life and source of all love and goodness. We have seen your love shared in many ways throughout the Bible, from the garden to the cross. And we see now that your love is still sprouting and being shared through many people within our community in different places. Christ, you are the vine. We are the branches. And together you are calling us to bear fruit fruit that produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Walk with us on the days that we are struggling to produce fruit. 
and remind us that no matter what, that we are loved by you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. God's peace.